if a tarantula walks into a Venus flytrap, will it get caught by the plant? Or will it use those giant fangs to rip the trap open and escape? Well, today we will be testing exactly that with three different fly traps that each have their own unique abilities so that we can see how a tarantula behaves with a plant whose main food source is actually spiders. Now, to get a tarantula, you obviously need to go to the pet store, but as we all know, they're very distracting and you usually leave with more than you expected. However, seeing as we now have a new pet, let's give her a couple different bugs to see exactly how she hunts with those huge fangs that might help her escape the fly traps later on. And to start off, let's see how she does with a tiny little fruit fly. All these hairs on the tarantula are so sensitive that they actually feel the vibrations of things walking around them. In fact, they feel things nearby before they can even see them because their vision isn't that good. However, this fly is so small that I thought she couldn't tell she was standing on top of it. So I added in another fly. But I was wrong. You'll see in a minute just how good those sensitive hairs are at helping her find even the tiniest bits of food. As you saw, she moved step by step towards the fly. And each time she got closer, she stays still to feel exactly where it is to hone in on it. Yet, because the wall was in her way, she couldn't grab it properly. But that just means we can see how she moves in steps towards the fly again. And as you can see, she actually did catch the first fly we gave her, even though I thought she didn't. Good girl! This is the first time we can see how she uses her fangs. She rips into whatever she's biting and keeps moving it around to tear into it. But we'll be able to see this much easier with something bigger. Her second meal of the day, a cricket. Not only can we see how she moves towards the crickets in steps again, but just like Karen said, she is extremely quick while doing it. And the reason why is honestly really cool. Each of these legs actually push or pull fluid that's inside of them to make them expand or contract. And the spider actually moves that fluid by using the muscles in its body to squeeze itself tighter. They also have other smaller muscles inside their legs to help them move exactly where they want to go, but it is quite complicated. In short, it's the same way excavators push or pull oil through these tubes to make them expand or contract. Pretty cool. However, everything changes for her third meal. Three Venus flytraps. She either uses those huge fangs to tear herself free, those powerful and super sensitive legs to move quicker than the flytrap and pull herself free, or she gets caught and eaten like most spiders that meet a flytrap. Now, before we feed her to the biggest flytrap we have, we're going to feed her to the one with the longest teeth. These teeth are so long that they usually reach behind the bugs they catch before it even knows that the trap is closing. So for the tarantula, this might trick her into jumping deeper into the trap. Or because she does have those sensitive hairs, they will simply tell her that something is moving before the trap has even closed. Now you need to know that this tarantula will be kept safe at all times and no harm will come to her. I have many years of experience with these plants and will intervene long before anything dangerous could happen. This experiment is for educational purposes only. Please do not try it yourself. Like most tarantulas, this girl is actually pretty calm and relaxed. As she walks, she moves her legs in basically every direction. And while I'm not an expert on tarantula biology, I'm pretty sure she's using those sensitive legs and hairs on her body to feel everything around her and get a better idea of what's there. However, she has never come across a Venus flytrap before and 
constantly moving those legs over the trigger hairs could easily cause a trap to catch one of them. Now, as we know from my other videos, most spiders like to climb up and into these traps because it gives them a high point to make their webs and they feel a bit safer in the traps, although that's why they end up getting caught. Yet, when it comes to a tarantula, she keeps going down the traps and it actually makes perfect sense why. Most tarantulas don't live up in the trees or bushes. They're actually quite heavy and live on the ground. So for this girl, going down to the ground is just somewhere she feels more comfortable with being. However, before we move on to the second flytrap, which will do better with a tarantula on the ground, let's move her up into a trap to see if she likes the nectar this plant has, because if you didn't know it, most spiders love that nectar, and it is what usually gets them caught by the flytrap. But as we can see, she doesn't seem too interested in what this plant has to offer. And I'll explain more why that is with the next trap. What's amazing for us to see right now is how she has walked all over this plant and had her legs inside many different traps, but she didn't trigger even one of them. The only guess I have as to why none of them closed is that she must walk that slowly and delicately that she doesn't set any of them off. And even after sitting here with her legs on these trigger hairs for 15 minutes, the plant had no idea she was there. Yet, like I mentioned, we have a flytrap that grows on the ground. And this one has much more nectar than the one with long teeth. Put the plant right up to it. Yeah, keep pushing that down onto it. There we go. Obviously, getting a tarantula to go where you want it to go and being careful while doing it isn't very easy. But we got there in the end. And seeing as this flytrap grows low to the ground, our tarantula should feel more comfortable down here. And if you can't tell, she does feel more comfortable. She isn't moving because she doesn't feel like she needs to. And this shows us two important things. Like I mentioned earlier, most tarantulas look live on the mossy forest floor, sometimes in shallow burrows or in between roots or even under some leaves. So this patch of damp moss covered soil with a couple leaves around her feels natural to her. And so there's not much reason to move right now, especially because she can tell that I am standing around watching her. So unlike other spiders that would go inside or underneath the traps to hide and make their webs, the tarantula just doesn't even think about that at all. But what I think is even more interesting is this nectar. We see it time and time again, but most bugs, especially spiders, love this nectar. And they eventually smell it out or come across it and eat it. But tarantulas do not care about nectar at all. The only things they eat are animals. So even though she might have started turning towards this line of nectar, it isn't because she wanted to eat it. However, we now see that she isn't completely invisible to these trigger hairs. As soon as it started to move after being triggered, she felt that and then kind of jumped, which only causes the trap to close quicker. But because this trap isn't the biggest one we have, which we will actually see next, and it doesn't have anything to make the tarantula want to go into the trap, she didn't get caught properly. Yet, we still gave her 10 minutes to see if she'd do anything about her legs being inside this trap. But between the jaws just loosely holding her and the fact that she seems comfortable enough to just stand still, the flytrap doesn't even know she's there. So it doesn't start to seal. Now seeing as it's time to see what would happen if she actually does get caught in a trap that's big enough to handle her, we gently convinced her to slide her legs out of the trap. And seeing as she'll probably get caught in this next trap, we will see how she reacts when it starts to seal and release those digestive enzymes. This plant is an absolute monster. In fact, it's actually a little bit smaller than usual right now, but could still easily eat my thumb. Yet, seeing as we only have a couple big traps remaining, let's put the tarantula straight 
into one and see what she does. Even though she was walking slowly and lightly, she still triggered this trap, probably because of her abdomen hitting the trigger hairs. But one side of it closed before the other. And while sometimes fly traps do this if they're old or weak, you'll soon see that the traps on this plant are working perfectly fine. Earlier, I told you that tarantulas live on the ground, and because of this, they are also kinda heavy. And I think she was heavy enough to hold this part of the trap down while walking out. And that huge, strong body of hers obviously doesn't even flinch when the other side moved around her. But what about her quick reflexes? I thought she would be able to run away from it quicker than she did. But if you think about it, I was moving her around a bit. Yet, when it comes to the next trap, she absolutely launches herself before it could get to her. Now, after basically holding one trap open and reacting faster than the other, we still wanted to see what she would do if she actually got caught by one. So, with the very last big trap on this plant, it seems as if our tarantula let herself get caught just so she could brag about how strong she is. For the next half an hour, she just sat inside this trap without a care in the world. And if you noticed, she could easily walk away because she actually freed her legs. In fact, this trap really thought it had a chance to eat her because it even started to seal as we can see here. But like I mentioned, we made sure no harm came to her and got her away from the trap before it sealed because that's also when the plant starts to secrete digestive acids. Now, as we just saw, a tarantula is no match for a massive Venus flytrap. In fact, this is just a baby tarantula. An adult would easily squash a Venus flytrap. And of course, this tarantula is our new pet, but she doesn't have a name yet. So I'd love to hear your suggestions in the comments. And of course, please would you consider subscribing. I'll see you in the next one.